Hi friends, and welcome to this week's episode of Seams Fabricated. It is absolutely pouring rain right now, so I'm really sorry if there's any background noise. I am your host, Lily, and today we will be talking about endangered and extinct animals that have been affected by the fashion industry specifically. It's well known that the fashion and textile industry is the second most pollutant industry in the world right behind fossil fuels. But today I want to take a closer and more personal look at the species it's affecting and the steps being taken or not being taken to reduce the impact. I'm sure we are all aware that animal skins have been used for clothing for a long, long time, from ancient Vikings to Prada handbags. But thankfully, we are becoming more aware of the animal exploitation, and many brands and countries are restricting or banning the production and import of animal skins and furs. But today, I'm not talking about the animals that we wear. I'm talking about the millions of species at risk in the wild because of the clothing choices that we make. At the moment here, in 2022, there are currently 41,415 species on the IUCN Red List and 16,306 species that are currently threatened with extinction. Those are some really big numbers. Last year, 23 animal species were declared extinct, which is the largest number of official extinctions ever. Now, I don't want to get anyone super depressed today, but I do want to reinforce how important this information is and how important it is that we act upon it. We are currently living through a mass extinction event, and according to scientists, it's comparable to the extinction of the dinosaurs. We all know how that turned out. However, unlike the dinosaurs, this event is purely caused by human activity. So let's get technical. What exactly makes a species endangered? There are five main criteria points that are taken into consideration when evaluating a species. These are the present or future threats of destruction or modification of its natural habitat. Overutilization for scientific, monetary, or entertainment purposes. Disease or predation. Inadequacy of steady numbers in the wild. Other natural or man made factors, such as noise pollution. So, I'm about to blow your mind. Technically, humans are on the endangered species list. Wait. What? Our natural habitat is being destroyed. Vital resources are not available to millions of people. And according to the World Health Organization, a quarter of the world's deaths every year are linked to environmental issues, not to mention contagious diseases. So clearly it is not just the plants and animals that are suffering. So what does your clothing choices have to do with the extinction of potentially millions of species around the world? Let's begin our investigation in the Amazon rainforest, home to the world's largest cluster of biodiversity. It contributes to 20% of the world's oxygen and 20% of the world's fresh water. We all know that deforestation has been a huge issue in the Amazon for years now. Cattle farming and food production are often highlighted as the main causes behind the deforestation. But another that is often overlooked is textile production. Brazil is the fourth largest exporter of cotton 
at around 2,341 metric tons of cotton per year. Interestingly, there seems to be a huge overlap in the number of endangered species and the amount of cotton farming done in an area. Two examples that stand out the most are Brazil and India. Both countries are hotspots for biodiversity, and both are experiencing massive species loss. The reason for this is deforestation, crop cultivation, and human interference, all of which cotton farming entails. So how has this impacted the wildlife? The golden tamarind was adored by Madame de Pompadour in 1754, who called them Le Petit Singlion, or Little Golden Lion. These tiny monkeys are adorable with their huge golden mane. They only grow up to about 25 centimeters tall and weigh about 800 grams. But a lot has changed since Madame de Pompadour met her first tamarind. Only 2% of their natural habitat remains. They live in the lush rainforests of coastal Brazil. They travel over vines in the canopies of tall trees and eat native fruits and bugs. These little monkeys help to spread seeds and keep the ecological balance of the forest in check. They are quite social and will often share a meal with their friends. It is the cutest thing. They literally have a little picnic up in the tree canopies. Thanks to the amazing conservation efforts of many zoos and locals, the numbers have increased around 3,000 with the help of many incredible scientists and ecologists. Unfortunately, the threat still remains. Their habitat is fragile, and despite the increase in numbers, any more loss in their unique habitat could be the end for these delightful little creatures. So curiosity got the best of me and I did some research of my own and went to Google Earth to see how much of their habitat is now occupied by humans and agriculture. And honestly, it's quite confronting. Brazil and the Amazon rainforest as a whole look so lush and beautiful and green from far away. But as you zoom in, the trees separate and little squares and rectangles start forming by the thousands. You can clearly see the end of the rainforest right up against farm fences. And the deep green of the forest is such a stark comparison to the dusty greens and browns of the agricultural farms. What's interesting is that in so many areas, the farms seem to cut straight through random pieces of forest. It's patchy, and this is most likely the work of illegal deforestation. Just go a little deeper into the forest and uh, no one will notice. But unfortunately, this cuts straight through the habitats of incredible animals that we still have so much to learn from. Another major issue within the textile production is the water usage and contamination, which I have covered in a previous episode. So if you want to know more about the effects of this on humans, go ahead and listen to that episode after this one. But today I am focusing on the impacts of wildlife. The issue of freshwater contamination is a major ecological threat and has already completely wiped out all forms of life in multiple rivers through India, making them biologically dead. The Yangtze River in China is also under threat. It's the longest river in Asia and provides fresh water and habitat to many of our favorite creatures, including the giant panda, the snow leopard, 
and little red pandas. If you've ever looked at travel photos for China, no doubt the Yangtze River was featured with its gorgeous snaking clear water through amazing lush mountainsides. While it is a picture-perfect source for biodiversity to flourish, it's also attracted much of China's population to live in cities by the riverbank, including Wuhan, Xiongquin, and Shanghai. According to Travel Guide China, the Yangtze River is highly polluted with industrial wastewater, including textile dyes and chemicals, chemical fertilizer, garbage, and even acid rain. In 2016, 35.32 billion tons of wastewater was dumped into the river. This kind of chemical waste directly impacts the health of marine animals, as well as those who drink it. Alkyl phenyl ethoxylates, or APOs, are used in textile washing agents and are harmful chemicals to humans and animals. Studies show that it can disrupt the hormone levels in fish so much that they actually change sex from male to female. This impedes the reproduction of the entire species. In humans, it has reduced the sperm count in men and caused birth defects and miscarriages. Its usage has been banned through Europe, and the US is still looking into it. Thanks to fish populations declining and human poaching, what I think of as the unicorn of the river has sadly already become extinct. That is the pink Baiji river dolphin. These river dolphins are so pretty with their pale pink skin against the blue water, and now they're gone forever. Since the discovery of their extinction in 2006, the finless porpoise has been declared the last surviving mammal in the Yangtze River and is now critically endangered. Thankfully, China has taken steps to lessen the effects of pollution on the Yangtze River by creating new laws for industrial waste and building new wastewater systems that are able to filter some chemicals. Despite the efforts, some textile industries are still illegally dumping their wastewater into the river through secret hidden piping. Greenpeace publicly called out H&M, Converse and Calvin Klein for using these factories. Unfortunately, I don't think there was too much follow up with any of these accusations, so I can't tell you for sure what became of that. I have saved the most surprising for last. This is something that I did not expect to find. Australia's biodiversity is also being put under pressure from the production of fashion. The Murray-Darling River is a staple piece of the Australian southern terrain and is home to incredible biodiversity. It's the heart and soul of the animal's habitat and also provides freshwater access for over 2 million people, which in Australia is a lot of people. Australia is very well known for its unique collection of animals. The Murray River is home to 367 bird species, 85 mammals, over 50 fish, 31 frogs, 46 snakes, 100 lizards, 3 turtles, and 124 families of macroinvertebrates. Of this amazing list, 57 species are on the endangered animals list, and 20 are already extinct.
An increasing issue is the blue-green algae blooms, which is killing thousands of fish at a time. While we don't often hold much value on fish and the little bugs and crustaceans, they all play a really important role in the entire ecosystem and impact the lives of other wildlife, such as birds and mammals that feed on them. What is the cause of algae blooms, you ask? Herbicides, or weed killers. Specifically, glyphosate, which is a common ingredient found in Roundup and other similar products. It is also known to cause breathing difficulty and rashes. Chemicals used on agriculture leach into the soil and waterways. Scientists have discovered that the breakdown of glyphosate in waterways releases phosphorus, which increases algae growth. Algae blooms are a natural part of the water's ecosystem cycle. But just like chocolate cake, rabbits, and Netflix, too much of a good thing can be a very bad thing. Many of the crops grown in Australia are grown along the Murray River. Water usage rights are given to almond farmers, vegetable crops, cattle farms, and a surprising 20% goes to cotton farming. Algae blooms are an increasing issue across much of Australia, and because our industries are fairly new compared to the rest of the world, not much research is being done on the impacts it's having on the environment. Sadly, even some of our most beloved creatures, like the koala, are en route to become extinct in under 30 years. So what have we learnt from today's episode? Every species counts. No matter how small or insignificant an animal, plant or fungi may be, they are playing an integral role in the ecology of the entire planet. Transparency and traceability within the fashion and textiles industry needs vast improvement. We need to be tracking how much crop is being produced, where this crop is being grown, how much toxic waste we are producing, and how much of an environmental impact this is having. We can't begin to truly make positive changes unless we know where we are at right now. And finally, your shopping choices matter. There is no guarantee with many brands that they even know where their product comes from. So the best bet is always to shop less, shop secondhand, and shop sustainable. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Seams Fabricated. If you have made it this far and you've enjoyed this episode, could I please ask you to give this podcast a rating? This will increase my visibility and help me spread this information to many more people. Of course, you can always share this podcast with your friends, family, and strangers on the internet. Your support really helps me out. So thank you so much for listening to this episode. This podcast is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts.